Grace Church. What a great joy. Are you glad to be here? Yeah. Yes. that you are. We welcome all of you in today. We welcome anyone who may be visiting with us this morning. What a joy to have you with us as well. My name is Dave Van Nett, and I have the privilege of pastoring this congregation. What a joy that is. And uh, we just welcome you in. Let's begin this time of worship by going to the Lord in prayer. Let us seek his presence. Lord and God, we come before you today. And we just thank you for this new day. We thank you for sunshine. We thank you for the rain yesterday. We thank you, God, for your mercies, which are new each and every morning, every day. And Lord, oh, how we need your mercy. Oh, how we need your grace. Lord, we are gathered here today to tell you that we love you. As we sing praises, as we hear a testimony, Lord, as we share together and interact as brothers and sisters in love. Lord, come. Be a part of this time. We invite you by your spirit to brood over us. Fill us with your spirit. Renew us and refresh us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My God, who's here, greet each other in the name of Christ. Would you do that? <laughs>
on. Would you join me in prayer? Lord and God, as we gather before you today, it is our desire to sing, 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 to, to praise you with all of that, what we have, our whole being, with everything that we've got, Lord. We just want to bring it to you today. And yet, even as we do, we recognize very quickly how, how we are distant from you. How sin so often blocks the way between us. And it ruins our intimacy, our fellowship, our relationship with you. Lord, sometimes we feel like we're just going through the motions, mouthing the words, giving lip service to you. And all the time, Lord, it's our own sin that's in the way. It diminishes our passion for you and our love. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, God, for our wayward hearts, for undisciplined minds. Forgive us, Lord, for giving in to urges and desires that are not holy and pleasing to you. So, God, as we gather before you today, yes, we want to sing, 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 but we also recognize, Lord, that we need your forgiveness. We need your grace, Lord. We are sinners before you. And so, God, would you come and cleanse us and make us right that our fellowship with you and with one another may be perfectly restored. Thank you for Jesus, for his sacrifice on the cross, for taking upon himself the death penalty which we ourselves deserve. Thank you, Lord, for his sacrifice that makes our relationship with you right again by faith and trust in him. So, Lord, we trust him. We place our faith in Jesus. Lord, even in the dark times, the difficult times, the suffering and the struggles, we recognize today, Lord, that we are not alone. But Lord, you, you are here. You are with us. You are our God. Thank you, Lord. We pray it and we sing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
well this morning in some great worship music. What a joy to be able to worship God and to do so together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do so as a body. Thank you for being present today. Today is a special day in the life of our church as we celebrate a testimony of one of our very own and a testimony of God's faithfulness, a testimony that we are not alone in this journey of life, even through the most devastating and difficult times and the struggles that we might encounter. And so today, uh, I've selected Psalm 105 as a kind of backdrop to this sharing this morning. Hear this word, our scripture today, Psalm 105, verses 1 through 8. Give thanks to the Lord, call on His name, make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell of all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in His strength, seek His face always. Remember the wonders He has done, His miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word he commanded for a thousand generations. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord and God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the promises of your word and who you are and that you are a covenantal God. Lord, we thank you so much that it's not up to us, our performance, even our response in faith, which is often faltering and feeble. No, Lord, it is up to you and your covenant, which you have established with your people since long ago, that we would be your people and you would be our God. Lord, thank you that you are our God, that you provide for all of our needs, that you come through in the darkest and most dismal of times, that you are a God who is worthy to be praised, a God who is good and gracious and faithful. So Lord, together we celebrate this today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Anoint us and anoint this service. Anoint those who share. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Amen. Today, as I mentioned, a special uh, day in the life of our congregation as we're going to allow Ron Opperman to share his story. I said, Ron, when this is all done and through, you're going to have an incredible story to share for our church family. And so today is that day. I am so glad you are here. You are in for a real treat this morning. Ron, with you, and we have your lovely wife, Judy, here. Jamie, who's been a real active part of this process as well. Uh, come on up. And uh, Jennifer's here today as well. The other daughter, thank you, Jen, for being with us today and for your part in all of this, too. Have a seat. We already did this one round, so. Do you have your mic on? Okay. All right. Check, check, test one, two. There we go. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, it was last October, almost a year ago, that Ron uh, notified me, and, and we even came into my office one day. It might have been after a band practice on a Wednesday, I don't remember exactly, but, and Ron confided in me that he had kind of a bump or lump on his side, and he wasn't sure what it was, and we were kind of thinking, oh, you know, he didn't feel bad, it seemed just fine, and he was going to go into the doctor and kind of figure it out, have a few tests run to find out what it was. You remember that day, Ron? You shared with me there uh, about this this thing. So we weren't quite sure what it was. Well, as it turned out, um, it was cancerous. And uh, Ron was diagnosed with cancer in December. And uh, Ron, I just want to invite you to just kind of fill us in a little bit. What's this 
journey than life. Um, refresh our memories, and just for those maybe who don't know you, who are maybe visiting even today, just to tell tell us all again a little bit of just kind of the overview of what what you've gone through really this last year almost, uh, but especially the last nine months. Well, first off, I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Savior. Uh, we went through this as a team, and that's why I have my wife and my daughter over here. Uh, I found out on December 16th that I had Don Hodges lymphoma cancer. Uh, my cancer treatment plan was for me to do six rounds of chemo. Chemo would go in 21 day cycles. Uh, I would go through five days of chemo, then rest for 16 days, then go back to Iowa City and do it all over again. Uh, continuing the cycle for five months. That type of cancer was known for coming back in the brain. My cancer team, and I decided to do two rounds of methotrexate following the six rounds of chemo. The grand finale. I have a surgery. Where did that came from? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, for any normal person just to go through the chemo, right? Uh, five rounds, kind of 21 day cycle, five days of chemo, a couple weeks rest, and then to do it all over again six times. And then to find out kind of near the end of that, that, oh, by the way, you need open heart surgery. Uh, we're going to do a triple bypass on you. Um, in the middle of all of that, earlier in the process, there was an infection that you had to deal with, and also COVID, that he and Jude both got COVID in that time. So, um, wow, that's a lot, right? I mean, yeah, it's hard enough just to go through any one of those. And Ron, here you went through all of those. So when you were diagnosed, and you the big C word, you cancer, um, you know, tell us about that. What were you? feeling and thinking and that was must have been devastating and discouraging or were you kind of okay we're going to get through this or how did that go well first off i was stunned and in this in disbelief you know, and in shock uh, because i had never been really sick in my life yeah. uh, i've never been in a hospital so all of these years that you had never been in a hospital for any length of time, any extended time until all of this. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. <laughs> when he was four years old, he had a fire and he burned his hand and he was in the hospital then. But other than that, he's never been in the hospital. Since four years old? That's amazing. That's amazing. So no gallbladders taken out or anything? <laughs> no, I didn't. Man, you're good. You're good. So awesome. Well, um, let's back up one slide there, Shannon. Uh, that was one of the things that, um, Jamie, uh, you had sent me this uh, kind of Facebook post earlier. My heart, uh, praying he will have an amazing testimony when all this is done. I can't wait to hear it. Already it has turned so many people who don't pray into praying people. God is good and has his back. Let's go fight, win, and kick cancer's but <laughs> I had to put the word but in there. <laughs> Originally, Jamie, you had put in something else. Sorry. <laughs> Stop Jamie for a church sake. But um, uh, we love that spirit and that mentality. And uh, you can see the scan there below it with all of that on the kind of the right side of your scan as you're looking at it there, the, all that dark mass. And that's the cancer. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yep. And that was the initial one. So the one in the middle, um, that was. March like second and so after three treatments he already 
you can barely see it. Just three treatments, and the one in the middle shows almost no darkness on that site. And, and there he is with the grippy socks and everything. <laughs> 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 That's, that's fabulous, so wow. What a journey. Uh, Ron, you were put in the hospital essentially just before Christmas. You spent Christmas holiday and other days that were of significance to you in the hospital. Well, what was that like? Just having to, you're like, oh, you probably had family gatherings planned. You were hoping for big get-togethers with the family for Christmas and all the grandkids, and there you were. What was that like? you well you know generally you spend holidays with your family uh, I ended up spending Christmas in the hospital I spent my birthday I spent Valentine's Day and I spent Easter in the hospital which was very different that's that's even once I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, being unplugged from everything, uh, you know, like work, come to church, I work with another band, I unplugged from that, and so it, it was pretty disconnected from everything. Yeah. I think it will be. Well, by the end of the first treatment, I was completely wiped out. I did manage to still keep Christmas spirit by wearing a hat for cheer. <laughs> and my daughter brought me candy bags with a verse in each one. I handed uh, them out to the nurses and anyone who came to the room keep the, to share the reason for the season. Luckily with technology nowadays, I was able to FaceTime my family and see their faces. And they also held off Christmas until I made it home. On my birthday, while I was there, my daughter made me a special nightgown to wear. That's, that's good. Let's go to another slide with the, uh, uh, I think it's coming up yet. Let's flip through a couple, Shannon. There's one with a nightgown. There it is. As I was with my family, my daughter made me a shoebox. Uh, she left it with me the day prior to it, told me not to open it until my birthday. And I opened the box on my birthday. I couldn't believe the love, support that came out of it. I had so many parts from family, friends, and my true family. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't believe it. If there was probably at least 60 cards, it really made my day. And we made him read every card out loud to us so we could enjoy every moment. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I think he would call that day, right? Yep. I, I, well, I, I was overwhelmed by it. I, within a day or two days, I called that today. And I told him that we might have one of the smaller churches in the Cedar Valley. That's one of the best. And we thank everybody for all the cards, food, calls, whatever you did, your prayers. We appreciate it all. We wouldn't have done it without you. Thank you. What a, what a testament to, to your love. And support as a kind of this is what 
This is what we do, right? This is just what Grace Church does. This is what churches all should do. Uh, we, we support uh, our fellow brothers and sisters. And so with your prayers, those cards, you know, it's neat to hear what you say. And that you made them read everyone out loud, you know, and every card was valued. Everyone made a difference. Uh, what you did there was important and it helped. It was a part of your kind of lifting up your soul in that time, probably of deep, kind of a deep darkness. And like you said, Jamie, there was a time where Dad almost kind of withdrew from everything. Yeah, because we didn't, like, but I'm, I'm sitting in the first few times, we just talked the entire day. In about the third or so, it was, it was just quiet. Yeah, yeah. I tried to talk and conversation. Yeah. Conversation. Just kind of resigned to the situation. Yeah, by the pride of the third or fourth round, I'm like, do it again. I did this in the long term. Yeah, yeah. And that was maybe halfway through. Yeah, just halfway. And you're like, oh. But I remember you celebrated it's halftime. If you had three of those treatments, right? And he said it's halftime. All the football season. Yeah. Halftime. So, Judy, I'm curious about you. Anybody who knows Judy knows that she's a socialite. Yes. Uh, she likes to reach out. She's gregarious. So she's a great personality, a great hospitality person for, for any church, especially for ours. But um, Judy, here you are, um, you know, having to withdraw from your connections and all of your social connections, your church family, and uh, sort of, uh, you know, isolate at home and just to kind of make that sacrifice to stand by your man. And uh, you, you did so with such grace. I know that that could not have been easy for you. Tell us a little bit about how that was for you going through this. Ron and I, in our lifestyle, don't really spend a lot of time together. Um, he goes his way with his band and his church and that. We go to church together, of course. But I did my thing and he did his thing. And then when we got this diagnosis, and we had to spend 24 7 together. <laughs> We're still in love, but it was a, it was a struggle to adjust. I had to make meals. Sometimes I had to cook if the food didn't come to the door. And that's unusual. We usually go to the I did do a lot of things. On my day's laundry, I made sure that he took his medicine. I did a log book for him. The medical library. Yeah, you made sure he kept up. Yeah, I kept his temperature and his blood pressure and all that. I kept a log on it since there day was, one. There was quite the time after the first treatment, it hit him so hard that he wasn't even able to open his water bottles. That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wow. So, it, like you said, Ron, this has been a team effort. Everybody has been part of this kind of healing road and kind of carrying you through this, including the church family. Um, Jamie, I know early on in the I process, could not have done it alone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And praise God, you're not alone, right? That God is with you and your family who manifest the very presence of God with you to, to help accomplish what needed to get done at those times. And Jamie, you had mentioned that um, you know you were kind of discerning who's going to do what in the early procedure. Right. You you fired your mom. She was, yes. she was going to be she's going to be a nurse or something. Yeah, or, she went to the first appointment with him, and she came home, and she said, "I said, oh, how did it go? Oh, it went good. I think I think he had radiation. You think? Like he? No, you're fired. I didn't <laughs> know. <laughs> so she did great being the nurse at home, and I unfortunately um, I found out he had cancer on December 16th, and I got. Hired this job um, starting December 17th, and luckily my boss had a father who passed away from cancer, so she said, whatever day you need off to go to whatever place, do it. Take it. So, it was so good. good. She worked a lot of overtime and a lot of weekends to be able to take that there and back. Yeah. Ron, we've heard you talk about your support from God, from your family, yet that's a long road of chemo. I mean, that's several, many months. And uh, how did you, how did you stay strong in that time? Surely there were days where you might have been down and weepy, um, discouraged, but overall you seem to have really pulled through. And every time I talk to you on the phone, you seem to kind of have a positive attitude about things. So how did you, 
What's the secret? How did you get through all of that? I stayed strong through all of it by the prayers, love, and the support of all my friends, my church family. I couldn't believe the amounts of donations, gift cards that I received to help offset the costs while I was off work. I really was overwhelmed by the number of homemade meals that were delivered to my home. I had friends offer me uh, rides to Iowa City. It was just amazing. Most of all, I made sure I prayed in particular. Prayer was a big part of it, wasn't it? You started this response to prayer and prayers of his people and <coughs> your own prayers. So. Well, it's not only just the people, you had the hurdles in between. Yes. Uh, it was a long road. Uh, had a double pork put in in January. Uh, after about a week and a half of it being in my chest and got infected. Uh, shortly after that, uh, uh, I had to spend another week in the hospital with antibiotics. A few weeks later, I got food poisoning and he died. Ended up doing a one round of lethal trexamine at the end of my chemo sessions. And I started to have kidney failure. And so we decided to only do one session of it instead of two, which was set up for. And what was It was supposed to be a three to four day study, and it being six to seven. Yeah, I ended up spending an extra couple days in there just to get my kidney ones back to where it was supposed to be. And uh, then after that, they, uh, you know, like, well, within a month and a half or something like that, I was supposed to have open heart surgery. And, they uh, wanted to, I think I went back to the hospital to have tests again. Uh, and at that, about two weeks later, then they said my kidneys were back to, to normal and, and that everything would be fine. Well, the next thing then we get, we get uh, Judy get COVID again. And uh, that was like the end of July, or I mean, end of June. And uh, we were concerned at that time whether that would mess up the schedule for my open heart surgery. Uh, but everything went smooth. We, we got over the COVID. It did hit me real hard. And uh, the doctor said it will be fine. And, uh, three weeks later, then I went through the open heart surgery. Well, and with the poor stitch putting, um, you had said that was one of the hardest things we had to go through. That and when he came back, he was just so bad, so bad. I could just felt so hard for him. So then we had an infection. The doctor said, they're going to have to get out. And I'm like, oh, no, we're going to go through that again. Um, but luckily, we have the pictures of it. Yeah, let's order. back up a little bit, Shannon. Uh, let's, in fact, let's back up to uh, the, one of the earlier slides after the comparison slide. I keep going back. There. Uh, Jamie, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Yeah, so that's where I got the days off. And every time we went, and every time we just, you know, it just so happened we did number two for the second round. And I was like, well, we got we to do the rest. And <laughs> then one of the green shirt, Louise Bird, but I was canceled for you there. That's amazing. That's amazing. It looks good. Yeah. And the next slide. And that one we've seen. Let's, and there's a, that's a post Christmas, and there's some FaceTime. There, uh, that's pretty cool. And the next slide. And tell so us this one here, um, on the right, is when I first got it, December 22nd, we had that particular PET scan. On the left um, is where you really see it. So on the top one, where it's bright, on the right hand side, um, it's when he first got it. On the left, you you can barely see it. That's like upper view looking down on it. Have a different view. Then. Okay. Yeah, it's barely there. Next slide. And this is the port. So on the 29th, that's what it looked like. It was completely infected. It was oozing. It was terrible. But as soon as they started the antibiotic, 
by the third, and it cleared up the seventh. You could barely tell that it was affected, and um, we, we didn't have to. I was afraid that they were going to have to like postpone his chemo, and he had such an aggressive cancer that like a lady at my work, her um, father had the same cancer and had to postpone it, and it ended up killing his whole chest um, because it is such aggressive growing on. So I was so concerned that we're going to have to postpone chemo, but with all the prayers, that, you know, practically what just took time for Double part, um, it goes directly in your chest to your vein arteries just because um, the chemo for your uh, regular veins will close and shut it down. So. Yeah. Well, and that way they can mix other medicine in with it too. Yeah. And the next slide. And then we see now already. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's a lot. You know, so not only chemo and eventual heart surgery, but uh, COVID and an infection and, and food poisoning from the hospital, no less. <laughs> so, you know, you think you're safe. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what time did I got two to three days by myself in the room the other day and cheers. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it, we talked a little bit about your heart. You, you were diagnosed with, with a heart. You, you had to have heart surgery. I mean, it, on top of all of that, were you having any, any comments or thoughts on that, your feelings about that at that time? Well, I was having, okay. Uh, I went first to have a procedure because I was having heart failure, uh, having stents put in. Afterwards, I woke up the doctor by my side telling me that they couldn't put the stents in because I had more than two arteries that were more than 50% blocked. And they were going to recommend that I have heart surgery, open heart surgery. I was shocked to say the least, but I realized that I had four choices. I could either have a stroke, I could have a heart attack, I could die, or I could have a surgery. And face it straight on. And I decided to choose number four facing it straight on. And to me, that was really, there was no decision other than doing that. Uh, I went straight on them with my faith, praying to the good Lord to give me the strength to watch over me while I, I go through it. Praise the Lord. Amen to that. Wow. And that one was, um, it was difficult because at the time of the, you know, the COVID restrictions, he could only have one person go down there with him. And I was a medical power attorney and I went to all the appointments. So I took him down there and mom had to stay home. So that was real tough. Even during open heart surgery, I just stayed home for any of the husband. Yeah, and so the, um, the surgery ended up being like five, six hours. And uh, so I had to back up to um, the independence and, and work, just keep my mind busy through it. Um, and me and dad had listened to, uh, Danny's open to tell your heart to be good, and uh, we listened to the, the meaning of it. Um, and it's about open heart surgery, and was telling your heart to beat again. And uh, so I left work, I was on the way back down, and I got a call from the doctor, and this is here to say that I took my bypass machine and started back up without a pitch. And I was like, this is so good. <laughs> I think we've already been touching on this, but Ron, just to kind of sum up as we wrap this up, um, how, how have you felt God, God working, moving through all of this, uh, this, all of this whole ordeal? And is there any kind of advice or encouragement that you would give us uh, for those of us going through difficult times and struggles and uh, you know health issues, maybe our own battle with cancer or another issue, um, what what words would you have? Anything else that you want to share? Well, for one, I, through all the years of my life, I never, and I never said this in the first service, but I could never see going from surgery and, uh, but. Well, that's cut you off and we laugh about it because the first time I dropped him off, he had never been in the hospital. And so 
I said, hey, you know, it's about 5 o'clock, you might want to get order in your dinner. He goes, what? How to do that? He goes, oh my gosh, I got him, but the man he went, here's how to do it. And then by the sixth uh, treatment, he got in there and he gets on the yeah, I need a cheeseburger, I need a, a pie, and I need a salad, I need, yeah, I need to figure that out real quick. That part don't pack. <laughs> he also knew how to ask for cherry slushies. He decided that was his favorite treat, so between us girls, every other day he got him a cherry slush. Yeah, with chemo treatment, I, you, you lose taste. And even the things you thought tasted good before, they, they didn't taste so good, right? Right. But things that were like I like hot items, you know, like Mexican food. I could taste that. Or anything that had kind of a zing to it, like I said, the cherry slushes. Uh, I used to drink a lot of Diet Pepsi. Once I did the chemo, I just didn't have any taste. To and I started drinking Diet Mountain Dew. And that's why I didn't do it. Started drinking her pop. Um, so that's why for his birthday, I don't know if you've seen the cupcake, but we had, I had left him cupcakes and had, so we had, had some cupcakes, but it was a slushy and a little straw. <laughs> he just loved the slushy. That is. Anyway, God gave me the strength and the peace through it all. He gave me an amazing church family. And my family to help me through. He gave me hope for better days to come. I had a friend of the family that gave me great advice. She said, through, through all that you must endure, you need to keep your faith, your hope, and your positivity. Amen. Yeah. And that it came from a member, a previous member here, but um, she had just lost her husband to cancer, and she has brain cancer. She has a little bit of through all of it. Just that hope, faith, and positivity. Hope, faith, and positivity sounds like a good formula uh, in a good guy, right? Any closing comments or advice that you, any one of you want to share? Did you, you were starting to, no? I just wanted to say that it was a family affair. Jennifer was also included with us. And the kids being at home, praying for the couple to come back home again. It was a very long process, but God got us through it. And we're happy now. Amen. And for Mel, it's not upset. He got to go to the yard. He drives on the way. Yeah, I'm going to write it down on my right. Neat. Ron, any last words of encouragement? I just, if, I just like to say, I guess, uh, keep praying, cling to the Lord, ask for strength, and never give up. I'd like to say that. To have faith, hope, and positivity. And I would say that this is a small church, but this is a mighty church. You know, we don't have a big family. Our extended family, we don't speak to you, so we have the mom, dad, Jenny, um, and, you know, the great kids. So it was just, we put it up without all you guys' support and all the help. And, yeah. And again, and thank you for everything. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord and God, we thank you so much that you are so faithful and so good and so true. And Lord, uh, we're so mindful that there are many healings that do not happen in this life, in this world. Um, despite our longing, despite our prayers, uh, there are loved ones who pass and people who struggle through cancer and sometimes don't always make it or even a heart surgery, or even COVID. And yet, Lord, when those times do happen in this world, in this life, they are great reasons to rejoice and to celebrate. We know that one day all suffering, all death, all struggle will be wiped away. 
Lord, until that day we journey through this life, we struggle through, but we, we cling to you with our faith, with hope, with positivity, believing, Lord, that you are a good God, the God who you are, that you will act, that you are a God of covenant, that you have promised that as we would be your people, you will be our God. And as we call upon you, Lord, surely you are faithful to heal and to share and to bless. Lord, we thank you so much for Ron, for his journey. We thank you, God, for the healing that you granted to him for helping him through this long journey, these months, this past year of uh, uncertainty and struggle and hardship and even some pain along the way. Lord, thank you for carrying on through it. We pray for his continued healing. We pray for continued strength. We pray, oh God, that you will protect him from any kind of cancer that might want to return. We pray that, Lord, you will keep him cancer-free through the rest of his life. We thank you for Judy, for her example as a Christian wife to stand by her man. And Lord, to be faithful in early hard times, even to sacrifice uh, the connections and the socialism that she likes, Lord, to, uh, just to be out with people. Uh, Lord, we just thank you that, uh, that you've carried Judy through too and that we can celebrate today that we can all be together here at church. And Lord, we thank you for Janie and uh, lending her expertise and her attention to detail and her thoughtfulness, Lord, to this entire process of everybody having a role to play, that she could accompany her dad to each and every treatment. And uh, Lord, that, that you give her the wisdom and the strength and the grace to. And Lord, we pray for Jennifer. We thank you, too, for her and her part in this. And her prayers and her help, much of it behind the scenes. Lord, bless her too, and bless all of the grandkids. Lord, what a day of celebration today. We thank you, God, that you are a faithful God who heals. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How about one more time, some encouragement for Ron and his family. I'd like to say enjoy every day because it can stop every time. Amen. Thank you, Ron. Um, so appreciate your journey that you've been on. There's another part of that journey. Last December, some of you will remember that before Ron was even diagnosed, his name came up for an elder, and we as a congregation voted unanimously to elect Ron as uh, an elder of Grace Church to serve on a on a three-year term on consistory, our leadership team. But we were never able to get you installed. You know, Ron has been ordained before as an elder, served in the past, but we need to officially install you. I always thought that word was kind of interesting. It sounds like something you do with a car stereo, right? You know, <laughs> install it, you know. But uh, today we're installing Ron as one of our elders here at Grace Church. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is the head of his church which is made up of many members with a variety of gifts. The purpose of these gifts is that the whole church may confess that he is Lord and serve in his name. And to enable all of us to do this, he gives particular gifts to some. This congregation has elected Ron Opperman to fill the office of elder. And I now ask Ron these questions. Ron, do you reaffirm the vows you made when you, were when you confessed your faith in Christ and became a communicant member of this church? If so, you may say, I do. I do. Do you believe in your heart that you are called by God's church and therefore by God himself to your respective office? I do. Do you believe the books of the Old and New Testament to be the word of God and the perfect doctrine of salvation? Rejecting all doctrines contrary thereto. I do. I ask you, Ron, who have been elected as elder, will you oversee and encourage the spiritual growth of the congregation, providing for the proclamation and hearing of God's word, the reverent celebration of sacraments, and the loving discipline of its members? If so, you may say, I will, with the help of God. I will. Will you, Ron, be loyal to the witness and work of the Reformed Church in America 
and do your best to further her mission at home and abroad. And so you may say, I will. I will. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who has called this person to this office of elder, enlighten him with your spirit, strengthen him with your hand, and so govern him that his life and labor may be to the glory of your name and the advancement of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to invite all of you now as members of this congregation to please stand as you make your bow. Do you, the members of this congregation, receive Ron as elder in Christ's church? If so, you may say, we do. We, we do. do. Will you respect him for the sake of the office that he bears and promise to walk in the way of the Spirit, faithfully heeding Jesus Christ and this servant who represents him? If so, you may say, we will. We, we will. will. The Lord bless you and multiply his grace to enable you to fulfill your promises. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I declare, Ron, that you are now not only ordained, but duly installed in your respective office as elder and commend you to the grace of God, which will enable you to discharge all your duties. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and merciful God, of whose help and guidance we always stand in need of, bestow upon your servant Ron such gifts as are necessary for him to fulfill his ministry. Give grace to him that he may serve you faithfully in this life and finally enter into the joy of the life to come. Grant your grace also to your people, this congregation whom they serve, so that all of us as leaders may fulfill our ministry, magnifying your name and increasing the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. How about some further encouragement for Ron? Big day, God. You may be seated. We're done with you for a while. That's how the band sings again in a moment, so don't go too far away. Praise God. We welcome those who are visiting today. Always a joy to have visitors with us. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence today. If you are visiting, I want to call your attention to a little yellow insert in the bulletin that says Discovery Class. It has nothing to do with the space program or the Discovery Shuttle. This is about discovering who Grace Church is, who we are, and what we believe, and part of the denomination to which we belong. Um, this is open to anyone who might be considering membership or just want to learn more about our church and our ministry. Uh, we'll begin the first Sunday in October. We'll meet between the worship services as soon as I can get there to the adult Sunday school room, maybe 10 05, 10 10, and we'll go for a good half an hour uh, until we begin this service. All the information is on here. If you have an interest in attending, please let me know. I'd like to um, know how many to plan on. Uh, so you've got a couple weeks to think about that, pray over that. We'd love to have you uh, become members of Grace Church, but you can be a part of the class without having to commit to membership. So it's kind of a safe, easy way to simply learn and explore and discover more about Grace Church as God guides you on your spiritual journey as well. Seniors Luncheon is this coming Tuesday at 12 noon. Our very own Will McCollum will be the featured guest. I say guest in quotes. Speaker, uh, you're not really a guest, Will. You're a part of this church family, you know. <laughs> But Will will be speaking at the Seniors Luncheon, kind of part two. He spoke last time we met, and people wanted to hear more of your story, Will. So we're going to let Will share once again. And if you can, uh, if you want to attend and you haven't already, please sign up 
at the information station today being the last day to sign up. Looking forward to the seniors lunch this Tuesday at noon. Fishnet and The Rock on Wednesdays are off to a great start with lots of children, new kids, uh, new, uh, new newcomers, visitors, and so forth, people who haven't been there before, to our Fishnet program and also to The Rock Youth Ministry. Uh, what a great start we have. But we, we thank you for all of the students. We thank you for teachers and helpers and leaders and volunteers. But we need more volunteers, especially in our Rock Youth Group, in order to keep this moving forward. We hate to have to close it down for lack of volunteers. So we need help. We need especially a woman, a female leader, to help me this Wednesday. I've, we've had some conflicts with some of our uh, other leaders. And so if you can help me this Wednesday, Please notify me as you shake my hand as you, as you walk off the service today, uh, or let me know sometime in the next day. But uh, we need some help there at our youth group, and uh, in order to make sure that that keeps going. Uh, adult small groups are coming soon. We will begin a new series the first Thursday in October. There's information about that in the bulletin. There's some flyers on the table in the foyer. You'll hear more about that next Sunday. It's a great series. Many of you remember Rob and Cassie McAllister. They were faithful members, attenders here of Grace Church for many, many years when they lived in the neighborhood. And uh, after 2016, they had to move to Des Moines for a job change. And uh, unfortunately, as many of you probably already heard, Rob tragically passed away this past Tuesday. Uh, he went into the hospital Thursday prior for a routine hernia repair developed sepsis and uh, he passed. Uh, Cassie had asked me to do the service, uh, which will be tomorrow evening uh, or afternoon, five o'clock down in Urbandale near Des Moines. And I have room for a couple more in the vehicle if you want to ride along with me. Um, we're going to leave here at 2.15 tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so 2.15 sharp, we'll be pulling out of the driveway. So, uh, but let me know uh, so that I can arrange we make sure we have room for you. So our sympathies to Cassie and Rob's family as well. Having said that, let's turn our attention to prayer. Let us pray. Lord, there are so many needs. I think you created us that way. Just so we would learn dependency upon you. That you would keep us on our knees and in prayer. I pray, O oh God, that you will, you will help us. Thank you for being there for Ron and his family, as you are there for all of us. We thank you for such a positive outcome to his journey. Thank you. We praise you that you are a God who heals. We're mindful that not everyone's journey ends so positively. Lord, we know again that one day all tragedy, all suffering, all heartache, mourning, death and dying will pass. And you will make all things new. Lord, let us declare your words and tell your wonderful acts. You are surely on the move. Be with those who grieve today, with Cassie, with Rob's family. Thank you for carrying Ross Holden through his surgery and Steve Smith through his testing on Friday. Lord, be with Tony Neither and Jean Grand and Pam Hyman. Be with Yuki as she undergoes surgery this Friday. And Lord, for so many more, for all the many health issues, whether they be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual, truth be told, we're all in a battle every day of our lives. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness throughout. Thank you, Lord, for such a great start to our fishnet and rock ministries. Lord, come, provide the children, provide the volunteers that are necessary as we walk forward in faith, believing that you call us to reach children. In fact, we make baptismal vows to do just that. Help us to fulfill those vows by stepping forward to help where needed. Thank you for our seniors' ministry. Bless our lunch. Bless the adult small group series to take place in October. Bless our men's and women's ministries, our helping hands ministry, our prayer shawl ministry. 
Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with a great mission and outreach, a small church with a mighty mission. Bless our discovery class as it forms. Bless us with continued growth, revival, and renewal here as a church. And Lord, bless our consistory leaders, men and women, elders and deacons, called by you to serve your church. Let us be faithful in doing so. We pray for our communities, our governments and mayors. We pray for the United States of America. Lord, there are many people who struggle today, flooding, fires, other tragedies. We pray, O oh Lord, for your truth and justice to prevail, for peace and healing. And Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come and that your will would be done. Right here at Grace Church, in our own lives, in our own community, in this nation, and around the world. Amen. Please stand and join Spirit of Grace for a closing song of affirmation, Child of Love. Let's stand and praise God.
awesome. Tamarine awesome. So, hey, that's good. So, Ron and family, thank you so much for your sharing today, your willingness to be open and to, to tell the story and to give praise where praise is due. Amen? Amen. To let the Lord's acts be declared. And so, thank you for doing that. Thank you, band. Uh, thank you for your part in leading worship. And thank you for being here today. Hey, you know what? We have some open pews here today. We have some open seats, do we not? Yeah. This is good news. We have plenty of room to grow. Yeah. We have a lot of ways we can reach out. You can reach out this very week. You can help change that for next Sunday. Bring a friend. Bring a family member. Reach out to somebody. Let's pack the house to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Lord says through the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen? Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and the friendship of His Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.